Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 5. So this time we're going to take a look at collecting our gem right here. So we'll need a C sharp script for that. We look at some sound effects to maybe make a bit of a cling sound when we collect the gem and we'll also look at something called a skybox. Now I'm going to start with a skybox as a matter of fact just because I feel having this in now will start making this game look a little bit more appealing and attractive. So we're going to go to the asset store again and we can do that by going uh, hold control press 9 or window and asset store. Now we've used the asset store previously because we used it to get hold of our third person character Unity Chan and we'll do the same thing here. So we need to type in skybox and it will bring up many different options and obviously same as last time if you find something you wish to pay for that is entirely up to you but we're doing everything free within this series so we click free only and you'll come up with loads of different skyboxes that you can choose from the one i'm going to go for is skybox volume 2 now as i say there's loads for you to choose from if you want to do something else uh, so Skybox Volume 2 and obviously all credit of this goes to the original creator because I had no input on this whatsoever. It is just an asset I've decided to use. Uh, so you would just click import or download when you're ready to get it, whatever asset you choose. And I've already gone ahead and done that to save time. And I have it right here, Skybox Volume 2. So what we'll do is if we go to Window go to lighting and we've done this previously haven't we in settings we can choose the skybox right here so if we click this little radius button here we can pick the skybox so if we scroll up and find whatever skybox we want you can usually find them by typing in sky or if you know the actual name of the material for the skybox you can go straight to it but you can select the material like so we have all these different options to choose from depending on what you want to go for and I'm going to go with this one right here known as DSG and what I'll also do is let's increase the light so we can see a little bit more within our world it looks a bit better now and basically the whole lighting thing we have going on is what makes the game look a little bit better a little bit more colorful as it were because it looked kind of bland but now it looks like it's getting somewhere so we can use directional light to modify what we have as well and you can see the effect that we have changing the color so if we set it to bright white we can also change the intensity set back to one maybe or even half and there we go. So I'm going to press play and see what this looks like real time. Yep, I'm quite happy with how that looks. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is let's take a look at collecting this gem right here. Now, if you remember, we've put it in a cube and this cube is what makes it easier for us to collect in the long run. And we're going to need a C sharp script to do this. So let's head to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create C sharp script, and I'll put this as gem silver. Now I want the different colored gems that we're going to have. So we'll have a green, we'll have a red, silver, whatever colors you want. And I'm gonna allocate them different amounts to add to our score, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, to start off with what we're going to do is we're going to add in a variable and this variable is going to be different to the one we created last time if you remember we used an integer last time and this time we're going to basically use a game object now we don't need these two methods already given to us by default so we can delete them and any annotations and we're going to declare this by going public game object and remember uh, I don't think I said it last time, but when coding, it is case sensitive. So make sure you get your capitalization correct. So if something is lowercase, make sure you do it lowercase. If it's uppercase, make sure it's uppercase because it is important. Uh, and we'll call this object, um, let's just call it score uh, box. And the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to add some score to 
the uh, obviously the wider score system uh, just by um, basically adding it here and changing. Uh, now there is a different way of doing this and I think we may come on to it but the basic idea I want to show in this tutorial that we can modify further on. So what we'll do is we'll go void because we're starting the method and it's going to be on trigger enter and when we press space it will automatically fill a couple of things here. We don't need it to be private and we don't need this statement within the parentheses here. So we can delete that. So all we need is void on trigger enter, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do is we will make it basically just disappear. And we can go um, destroy and in brackets game object semicolon and save. <clears throat> Now, the reason we have this here is not important at the moment, but I just want to show the method of what's going to happen with this, uh, the, so the whole process we see working correctly. Now, what we do, apply this to our gem, and for reference sake, let's set our variable over here. So score box, we need to go to our canvas, our score box, drag and drop over there, even though it's irrelevant at the moment because we don't want to reference it in the script, we just need to see this in action. The final thing we need to make sure we're doing is on the silver gem, make sure we tick is trigger, then press play. So as we go over here, we can see that the gem disappears because we've collected it. So there's different ways of doing it. As I say, we could add animation. Uh, animation is something we'll probably get to next episode, I think. Uh, so we may refine it later on. As long as we get all the basics down for this game, we can then spend some time refining things to make it better. So we've got the basics of that. Now what we'll do is let's add some sound effects to that. So in our audio folder, I'm going to drag and drop this collect sound into there. And on our main camera, I want to right click and create empty. And this is just an empty game object with no components attached to it other than its transform position. And I'm going to drag and drop, collect 001 onto that game object, then right click, rename, and call it gem collect. And we want to untick play on awake. What that means is as soon as the game starts, or as soon as this object becomes active, it will play the sound. And we don't really want that. We want to play it on command via the script. So back into our script, what we'll do is we will type public uh, audio source. So the type audio source is another type of variable that we can use. So we have things like we've already used integer, we've used game objects, we have audio source. There's different ones we can use. So audio source is another way of doing it. And we're just going to call this collect sound semicolon. I'm just going to change that there. So uh, all we need to do is before we destroy the game object, we need to go collect sound dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon, and save the script. So remember, case sensitiveness, or sensitivity I should say, I'm not sure if sensitiveness is a word. It might be. Uh, anyway, um, it is case sensitive. So we have to absolutely make sure we are doing everything right. In Visual Studio, usually it will flag up with a little you know, underline, red underline saying this doesn't look right if there's something wrong. So back to Unity. <clears throat> All we need to do now is on our silver gem, we need to assign uh, scorebox again because I changed it to a lowercase s. So scorebox and collect sound, which is the gem collect. Now what should happen? As soon as we enter this area here to collect the gem, it should play the collect sound. Oh, providing we actually get the gem. Not very good at this, am I? There we go. That is that working. There's some sound effects right there. Now, what I think we will do before we finish this tutorial is we will add in some more because if you see here, we use that score box. So let's add to that score box. 
Now, because we're referencing some UI elements, we need to add a line of code to our namespace. If you remember, these lines of code at the top are the namespace. So under it, we need to go using unity engine dot UI. This enables the script to then reference everything it needs to reference within UI elements, i.e. everything in the canvas, easily. If we didn't have this line of code in the namespace, it wouldn't be able to recognize that we're changing some text elements or UI elements. So the line before we have collect sound dot play, we then need to put in scorebox dot get component. And the reason we put that is because we need to reference a component within this game object. And then within spiky brackets, we need to put the name of that component. And if you remember, we're changing this, the text. So we put text in spiky brackets and then open close bracket. And then we need to put the sub component, i.e. the text right here. So just for reference, the component is called text. The subcomponent of this is also called text. However, we have to remember that is lowercase t on the text for this second one. The first one is an uppercase t. So text and then equals. Now, because this is a text value, what we have to do is basically put in quotes. So I'm just going to do this by simply putting a thousand. So what it'll do is as soon as we pick up the game object, which is the gem, it will add one thousand, or rather it will set the score as one thousand. So let's save that script, head back to Unity, and let's press play. So as always, if you have any errors, any problems, there we go. There's our thousand added right there. So as I say, if you have any problems, errors, or anything of the sort, remember you can get these scripts free on the website. Head on over there, downloads and assets, and you can get them there. Now, we've got the basics of everything working now, uh, but the next episode, what I would like to do is I would like to kind of get this background maybe rotating a little bit so as it looks like there is motion within the world itself. Um, we'll also look at creating some... Uh, global scripts and what I mean by global scripts is a way to reference the UI elements we have here so the timer and the score box so we can reference them from other scripts they're called global scripts uh, in doing that we're also going to work on uh, like I say the timer script the score script and we may start looking at death and lives as well depending on how far we get so until that next episode guys thank you very much for watching